What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. We're officially on the road. On the road again? This will be night two. And we are up here in North Carolina. Uh, kind of by Roanoke, I think. So No, maybe not. No. Pretty close though, I think. We're close to the rapids. Yeah. Oh yeah, Roanoke Rapids. I think that's what it's called. So check this out. They got a nice little river going on over here. We've been over here before. Yeah, we've been here with a shuttle bus. Uh, I think about a year. Whoa. Holy crap, this dog's pulling me hard. But they have a distillery. That's what this place is, a distillery. So the distillery is in that red uh, brick building. And then the RV is way down there. Look at this tree. Look at the size of this thing. You can do three tastings for free or five for five dollars. Yeah. The... Which I don't really understand. I don't know how they make any money. How do you, how do, you do three tastings for free or five for five dollars? So what if I just do two, three, like, Two, three free tastings. I, we did, we left a tip though for them because they're very nice. Yeah, and uh, Milo had an accident inside because they allowed dogs in there. Yeah, that made me feel bad too. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting pulled all over the place. So we're going to walk down to this river and check it out. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to go in the water. But rules were meant to be broken. So that's what I got to say. YOLO! Yeah, YOLO, as the young kids would say. Wow, look at this place. You got water over here trickling out of the mountain. It's running into these rapids. Man, I gotta do some white water rafting. That'd be awesome. What do you think, Milo? Do you approve? You gonna jump off? So, you can... There's a ramp over there and you can put your boat in. Although, I'd be very skeptical because there are so many rocks, I'd be afraid to ruin my boat. Oh, we got a little fish in here. What do you think, Milo? Tell me if the water's cold, Milo. Is it cold? No, you don't care? Okay, right in there. See any fish? Any fish? Oh yeah, look at all the fish swimming over there. Or are those those little buzzards? <laughs> He's just sitting in it. Oh, here, here comes Sam. Ah, don't look, gotta go see my fish. Oh my god. <laughs> what up guys? Checked into this campground a couple days ago. We've been hanging out, just relaxing. It's been nice, thing, nice to you know not have to worry about vlogging and stuff too much a little bit. Just, just relaxing and spending time with Sam and I. And uh, our site is a little... I don't know if you guys can tell. So I'm holding the camera straight. The hill goes down. Yes, because it goes uphill. So I don't know if you guys have been watching the news, but we're supposed to get some really rough storms coming in uh, tonight. And... I'm a little worried about it only because they're saying really high winds and tornadoes and like they're really talking about it so i have the dolly hooked up and everything it's all plugged in wired up ready to go got my full my fresh water tank is full gray and black are full and the reason you want to do that is because with a low center of gravity on these tanks it kind of holds the rv down more and doesn't let it sway as much so Got those full. Once the winds start kicking up, I'm gonna pull our slide in. I took my Starlink down off the roof because I don't need it blowing away. I already dropped it once. That's why it has seam tape on it. <laughs> it's holding it together. Um, but I'm just kind of preparing everything. I put the sewer hose away and stuff because I don't want that to blow all around. Um, and I'm just, you know, I have the, the generator on standby. For those of you who don't know, we have a Power Horse 4500 inverter generator. With a 30 amp plug on it, plus we have the built-in uh, Onan that I really don't like to use, but it's a great backup. So I got that going. I put almost everything away. I apologize if you guys hear the wind noise. The wind is, is already starting to kick up and it's only like 2.30. So we'll see, maybe the storm will come sooner. I gotta put my rug away before that blows away. Awning is definitely in. Gotta put her flowers away. Yes, we travel with flowers apparently, that's basil. This is some garbage that we're, uh, old vacuum conked out, so we're throwing that away. I noticed a lot of people are checking out. I don't know if that's due to the storm, because all these sites were full before and across from us. But I also noticed quite a few people checking in. So I don't know if they're just trying to get off the road before the storm comes and hunker down. Personally, if I wasn't already checked in here and everything, I would have drove straight through, although this storm, depending on where you're going, is supposed to be riding from uh, North Carolina all the way up to Washington, D.C. I think they even said New York City, so 
I mean, depending on how far you're going, I mean, we're only going to Jersey, so we probably would have felt it. But right here in Virginia, it's supposed to be the worst. We are in like the purple zone. Like it's, I don't know. I hope it's not too bad. But like I said, we have everything ready to go. Got my backups, got my preps. And we'll see what happens, guys. All right, good morning, guys. So we're officially all settled in here. Uh, the other day when I was going by, I found some wood. Somebody left on the side of the road. So I started splitting it up. This is gonna make great wood. It's really difficult to split. It's probably the most difficult wood. I'm not sure what kind it is, but it's been really difficult to split small. But um, it's gonna be make great wood for our solo stove that we have. We have the solo stove Me uh, Mesa XL. So it's pretty sweet. And uh, to use that, you have to cut the wood down really small. Anyway, today's video is sponsored by Auxidio. I think that's how you say it. I apologize if I'm saying it wrong. This is their brand right here. And this is what they sent us. So they reached out to us. They said, hey, check out anything on our website. If you guys are interested, let us know what you'd want and we'll send it out to you. You guys can do a review. So for the longest time since we bought this RV, I've always hated, hated our headlights. They're dingy. I eventually want to get new headlight lenses all together. I found the ones I want. They are really nice. And I think they'll make the RV look much newer too. Um, but for now, this is going to make a huge difference. These are LED light headlight bulbs. So um, I'm going to go ahead and plug these in. So let's read the specs together. So these are 65,000 color temperature uh, with a 50,000 hour operating time. That's a long time, guys. That's going to last us probably the rest of our lives with this RV. So as long as nothing happens. So anyway, so we are going to pop these in. I already started... Hi, Sam. Hi, guys. I got a tan. Yeah, Sam got a tan the other day. I want to spray tanning. <laughs> so I already got everything started to pull out. Pulled the headlight out. Very simple. There's one bolt on top right here. And then two underneath. One, two. You kind of have to wedge in between here to get it, but it's not a big deal. And the headlight comes right out. I took the blinker bulb off. That way it gives me a little bit more working room. This is the stock bulb. The nice thing about these two is you don't have to change anything, any wiring or anything like that. This will plug in. This is an H13 size bulb. This is a 2008 4E450. So this is going to unplug and a new one is going to plug right into this. I don't have to change out anything, which is really nice. So I'm going to simply pull these tabs, get this taken out, and then we'll pop the new one in. All right, so we're going to jump over here and we're going to do an unboxing, see what comes with it. and. See if there's any difference between the stock headlight bulb and these LED lights. Let's see. All right, so right out of the box, they give you some nice little white gloves. That way you don't get your the oils from your fingertips all over the bulbs and stuff. Because um, that could actually decrease the life of the bulb. So they give you, I guess this is an owner's manual. And zip ties for something. And in here are the new upgraded headlights. Okay, so it does come with some kind of converter wire piece. I do see that. Okay, and that looks just like the port for the H13 headlights. Oh, and it's pre-wired. I see that. So this is going to be pretty plug and play, I believe. Let's get this out here. Wow, these are, these look really fancy. So I'm going to go ahead and put this next to the stock bulb. I don't want it to fall. Okay, so this is the halogen bulb, obviously. This is the brand new LED one. And uh, you get this little wire, so we'll have to tuck that somewhere, make it nice and neat. I guess that's probably what the zip tie is for. So you can see this is the plug for the H13 size. And this is the H13 on the thing, so it's identical. All right, so I'm gonna go over there, plug this in. And uh, I'm gonna wait till nighttime, obviously, to show you guys what it looks like, but um, we're going to get this all wired up for right now. All right, guys. So this is normally where your light bulb would plug right into if you had a stock bulb. Um, but we're going to take this piece and we're going to hook the bottom end of this right into there. Now, it's pretty hard to do with you guys. Let me see. Oh, wow. That was actually pretty easy with one hand. All right. So now we're all hooked up. I'm going to do a pre-test just to make sure it turns on before I install everything back in. And then uh, that way if something is wrong or something's not tightly connected, we don't have to pull the whole light bulb off again, the whole headlight assembly. All right, so you can see the headlight is on. Now if we go over here, holy moly. Guys, it actually hurts to look at it even during the daytime. It is super bright. 
super super bright all right good so we know it works we know it's plugged in right i'm going to uh, tuck these wires away using the zip ties and then we are going to slide this into this big hole right here i uh, thank you that's what she said and then uh we'll bolt it back up and then tonight i guess i'll show you guys a daytime look too but tonight we'll come back and we'll see the major difference all right guys so the first one is in i really want to figure out how to clear these headlights up some more because I think that'll help even more with the brightness. But here's the first one. It already looks way better, super brighter. And then here is the stock one. So you can see it's just, there's so much like, I don't know what it's called, but they really need to be either cleaned up or replaced. But let me step back so you can see the difference. You could already see this one is so much brighter, especially in person. I don't know if the camera's really gonna pick it up, but I'm gonna pull this one out. We'll redo this one. And then tonight when it gets dark, I'll give you guys a full picture view of how bright these actually are. All right, guys, I got them both in. I'm excited to see that sunset. That way we could try it. Now, just a pro tip. In case you're ever on a road trip or you're just out about, and maybe the auto parts store is closed like it was in my situation two days ago, these bulbs keep them. Even though it won't match, you'll still have a headlight bulb to put in just in case something happens. And that's that's for anything. I always try to keep a spare bulb in my cars, in my RV, wherever, just in case, you know, you're driving late at night or the auto parts stores are closed and you, you're trying not to grab attention from the police, you know, at least you'll have a bulb. You can pop it and you don't have to worry too much about it. It's super simple to do. By the way, there is a red gasket that goes around this. When you pull these stock headlights out, and it's, it's on most headlights, they have a gasket. Make sure the gasket comes off too. Just like if you were to change your oil and you take off the oil filter, there's a, ga a gasket. You always want to make sure that gasket comes off of here because when you go to put the new one in, just like these, it won't seat right and it won't twist lock uh, if that gasket is on there because it's going to be too much of a, of a space, of a gap. So, just a pro tip. But yeah, I'm going to keep these because... They actually fit in this car. They are the same exact bulb. So I'll keep one of these in the RV and one of these in the car. That way I always have a backup. And uh, we'll avoid any issues and be safe, of course. That's the main goal. So I'll probably put them, put maybe one in here. That way it stays safe because it has nice cushy padding. And uh, the gloves. I, I didn't use the gloves, to be honest, because I didn't have to touch the bulbs at all. And my hands... I mean, I don't know if I'd eat off them, but they're not filthy, so... But, um, but yeah, everything went on super simple. I didn't need these because I have a, a spot uh, behind the headlight where I could tuck all the wiring. So, and it was, like, it was stationary. It didn't move, so that's great. So, I didn't need this, but it's good to have, depending on what kind of car or vehicle you have, you might need these, so just pay attention, you know, to how you're going to configure yours. But, yeah. We'll wait till the nighttime, and then I'll get back with you guys. I am super excited to see this, though. We installed a light bar on the RV originally because sometimes we go down these really dark back roads or off-road, and I couldn't see anything with the stock headlights. Even with the um, high beams on, it just didn't make, make that much of a difference. So I'm super excited to see how this is going to change our lives and our driving experience. So I'll get back with you guys later on tonight about that. All right, guys, I got one more tip for you. These headlights... I don't know if you noticed from the last clip, but they're a lot clearer. Unfortunately, this isn't a permanent fix, but I use deep bug spray and I spray the whole lens and I let it sit for a while for like three, four or five minutes. I let it eat away at whatever is on the lens, all the crust. And I don't know what that yellowing is. I don't know exactly know what it is, but it tends to remove all that. Now, when you do this, you might want to tape off your RV's trim for the paint. You don't want to get it on the paint because it'll eat that away. Um, depending on what kind of bumper you have, you might want to spray that down too. But it works great. Again, it's not a permanent fix. I usually do it every couple months. Um, but it makes a big difference. I mean, you can see how clear this headlight looks. It looks almost brand new. There's a little bit of haze, but it looks a lot brighter. And I feel like it'll let a lot more light transmit through. Look at that new bulb in there, guys. Can you see it? Right there looks fancy all right so but yeah i just wanted to give you guys that tip because i know a lot of you are driving around out there with those dazed out fogged out headlights that you can't even see out of so uh it might just help you a little bit where you could actually see safely going down the road and make your brand new headlights look even better 
So we've been here for about a week and a half now, maybe two weeks. I think it's almost two weeks. No, maybe about a week and a half. Anyway, um, I try not to let the RV sit too much as far as motor-wise. I always want to keep everything like kind of wet and lubricated. And I try to start the RV every week or two, just in case. I know you don't necessarily have to, but I just, I don't know. It makes me feel good inside, so I do it. <sighs> it's hot today. Um, it's been really cool. Yesterday was 75 and very cloudy, and the last couple days have been about 75, but today warmed up. Tomorrow's supposed to be 88. I don't know. I feel like I should have just stayed down in Florida. Should have came down, uh, came up a little later. But we'll be up here till about the middle of October, so it should definitely cool down to a point where we might even need the heater on a little bit just to, you know, kick the chill off. In other news, I got Cody and Milo this plastic pool. So far, it's not going too good. Every time I want them to go in it, I have to put them in it. Um, I had it filled up all the way with water. They didn't want to go in it. Now I have it very low. They don't want to go in it. Although Milo will stand in it and drink out of it like a big giant water bowl. So, I don't know. We're still working on that, I guess. But I figure on these hot days, if he wants to hang outside instead of being cooped up, you know, at least he can cool off real quick because these French Bulldogs don't really do too great in the hot, hot weather. He kind of relies on the air conditioning, so. I don't know, you know, you try to do something good and they just, they just, darn dogs just don't appreciate it. I don't know. All right, guys. It's officially pretty dark out here. Yeah. And uh, I'm super excited to show you guys these headlights because they make a huge, wow. huge difference. Wow. All right. So this is what they look like from the front. I mean, they are really freaking bright. Wow. I think it really helped that I clean these lenses up, but man, those headlight bulbs are bright. And then here it is, it lights up the whole playground, yeah, guys. Like Everything, all the way up to that white RV back there. It's crazy how bright, wow. Man, I can't thank this company enough. Now I feel a lot more safer driving at night because before I freaking hated it. Our headlights, I don't know, the stock headlights, I feel like they, they just shot straight out. Right. They didn't shoot like on the ground and light the area up. But look, look how bright the area is now. It's crazy, it's like we're at a stadium. Sim, um, all right, hang on. Let me turn on the brights for like a split second. I don't wanna kill anybody. <laughs> But let me turn them on. We'll see how it is. All right. I got to do this really quick because it's beaming on my neighbor's RV across the street. Look at the white RV now. Now it's all the way lit up. All right. I, I got to kill these headlights because I don't need anybody complaining. I've never had a headlight that bright in my life. Hold on. I got to. Let me see if I can show you guys the difference while I have it all open. So, you can see the difference in how high it shoots up. Those look so killer, guys. I am definitely going to get a set for the car. I have to. Absolutely have to. Again, I appreciate that company sending me out. All their info is going to be down below. All right, well, I had to come back inside because the mosquitoes are really bad up here in New Jersey. Um, I don't know. This is the second, the first campground we came out when we first came up here. They were, I mean, I couldn't even walk the dog. I had to kind of like rush the dog because we were getting attacked. Here, they're not as bad, but they're still all over the place. And especially when you put like lights on and stuff, it tends to attract them. So I started getting bit. Anyway, guys, I am thrilled with those headlights. I mean, that is going to make a world of a difference. Um, we try not to do too much nighttime driving. I think it was mainly because it I really couldn't see <laughs> but man with those headlights that is gonna make a huge difference it'll light up the entire highway and um, you know sometimes even with my glasses I have a, a, an issue seeing like the um, highway signs up above like sometimes they're really far away they're telling you about an exit or whatever it is or the street name so even with the high beam stock I couldn't see so now <laughs> I'm gonna blind that freaking uh, those highway lights I'll be able to see everything Anyway, I'm going to put in a fill... It, it, God, why are you looking? <laughs> what happened? Look somewhere else. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to... Stop laughing. 
So if you guys are interested in picking up some exterior lights, I mean, I'm on their website. They have every kind of off-road light, flood light, mats. Let's see what else they have. They got brake lights, tail lights, the light strips that can go in or outside of your RV. I mean, they got a whole bunch of stuff. You just put your make, model, and year in, and it'll show you everything that's applicable to your vehicle. So definitely check it out. Uh, it's a really cool website, really reasonable price. <laughs> I think the the headlights they sent us out are about ninety bucks, and they are totally right they are on sale right now, and they are totally worth it. Also, if you guys use code that nomadic couple, you'll get fifteen percent off your purchase site wide. So uh, there is that. You'll have a good savings. You'll have some safe headlights, and uh, you can get some other cool lights to pimp out your ride and some other gear that they sell. So I'm gonna put a link down below uh, to their website. You guys definitely check it out and uh, let me know what you guys think. I think it looks really nice on the RV. All right, next on the list of things to do while living in an RV, because some people, a lot of people, think RVing is easy and it's cheap and you can uh, save so much money. And that might be the case if you live in like a rundown trailer and you don't care about it. And maybe you live in like an RV park that's like 300 a month. I don't know where that would be, maybe somewhere in like Idaho or something like that. Um, but in the case of somebody who actually travels and keeps up with their RV um, and may maybe has like a Class C or a Class A with a 55 gallon fuel tank and it costs $175 to fill, uh, it can be pretty expensive, especially when you gotta fill it, you gotta maintain everything, tires, brakes, oil changes, transmission flushes, um, you know, repairs, it, it, it gets costly. Anyway, today's repair is this TV. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm holding the camera straight. You can obviously see the TV is on an angle. Now, I don't know what happened. This isn't the most high-end TV in the world. It's a TCL, they're from Walmart. I mean, it puts out a nice picture, but it's not like a um, like a Samsung or something like one of those high-def ones where you look like you could reach out and touch the fish. Uh, it's not like that. So, let me swivel this around. I don't know if you guys can see, but the back plate, this is not the mounting bracket. This is the back of the TV where all the connections are and everything. It let go from the back of the TV. So you can see it, it's kind of loose all in there. Hopefully you can see. Anyway, I guess you could take my word for it. So this is holding on fine. This is mounted to the TV. This is the TV, for, uh, this is the wall mount frame. I don't exactly know what happened, but it's very wonky, you can see it. Um, so I'm gonna have to pull this off and try to re-snap this back in. I see there's little, I don't know if that's little clips or what, but I'm gonna have to pull this off and see what the heck is going on before this thing falls and puts a hole in the wall or cracks the screen. So let's pull this off and take a look. All right, so we pulled it off. This is the back panel that's loose. And these little tabs are here. It looks like they're supposed to like, I don't know if it, they cracked off. Maybe we hit a bump and it shook it too hard, but there's nothing. I don't want to push too hard because I don't want to crack the screen, but there's nothing to click it into. And I'm perplexed to see why. Yeah, look, look, the, the screws have nothing to do with this piece. Huh. And for some reason there's screws, but they're only on these two sides. And that and side it's is not held even in. Hold, no, the screws that are in here aren't even for this. Like, I still can lift this up. Hmm. Oh. All right, let me do some more uh, Investor Gadget investigating Investor here. Gadget. What did I say? <laughs> you said Investor Gadget. Uh, <laughs> Inspector Gadget. Inspector Gadget. I'm going to put my helicopter hat on. <laughs> Milo, you're not going to help? Come on, man. <laughs> he left me right fast. Cody. <laughs> buddy. <laughs> help buddy, me. Buddy. <laughs> All right, guys. What do you think? Back to level, nice and sturdy, looks good. So I figured out, oh, let me get up. Oh my God, what a hassle, I'm getting old. So you can see it's nice and flush now, everything's sitting in there. So this panel sits flush and then pushes to the right and locks in place. And uh, then, yeah, I don't know, it was good. It's not a great system, but then again, like I said before, these, I guess these TV manufacturers weren't really putting into consideration people putting them on the wall in the RV and getting shaken around and stuff. So it's just something I'm gonna have to keep an eye on. I did go ahead and put a piece of seam tape. You probably can't see it too well. It's right there. And that's holding 
the back wall together. It doesn't look great, but once the TV is in position, you can't see it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Don't judge me. All right. That's all I got for you guys today. Let me turn this way so you guys can see my beautiful face. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. I'm going to put an ending on this video. I'm ready for bed. It's getting kind of late, and i got to be up early in the morning. So you guys have a great night. Uh, thanks again for the uh, headlights. I appreciate them. Oh. So yeah, I'm going to put an ending on this video. hope you guys have a great night, and I'll see you guys in the next one.